Welcome everyone to Nerd of the Rings. Today we have a really fun video for you. We are going to learn how to play Magic the Gathering, specifically the new Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth. And uh, to help me today, I've got a friend of mine, Don Marshall, who you probably know from TikTok and other things. Don, how's it going? It's going really well. Thank you so much for having me. I am excited to uh, teach you magic and then uh, kick your butt and put you in your place. Okay, well, we'll see about that. I mean, I've I've got a whole, like, five five games under my belt, so I'm <laughs> riding pretty high here. Uh, uh, let's so, do it. So we've got the starter decks, um, and uh, Wizards of the Coast was kind enough to send these along so Don and I could actually record this ahead of time, pre-release, and then we're going to be in the live chat the whole time uh helping to answer any questions you guys have um probably mostly don because he knows a lot more than i do uh, but i'll be there too so um thank you uh to them for for sending these along so that we could uh get this recorded ahead of time um with that we're we're let's go ahead and take a look uh don you are the good guys, and I have elected to be the baddies today, so. Yes, I would like to just point out you have 100% asked to be Sauron. Uh, I am going to be playing the starter deck Aragorn and Arwen Wed. Uh, they are a pretty cool, uh, uh, I guess, first card you see in there. I love the artwork. It's gorgeous, and uh, they're pretty powerful creatures, so very excited to summon these two. I, I really want to see the... Uh alternate version of that card where it's Aragorn and Arwen after four children. That's, uh, <laughs> as, as a parent, I'm, I'm interested to see what the difference would be there. <laughs> you know, I imagine more tired. Uh, yeah. More I imagine tired. Aragorn's got thing. bags under his eyes. His hair has gone a little gray. <laughs> just that whole deal. All right. Uh, okay. should we shuffle up and, oh, well actually I, tell me, tell me your, your, uh, your top card. Um, so yeah, we've got Sauron, the lidless eye. Um, he's got the Palantir actually on this card built into his armor, which is kind of crazy. And we see that he's got a few fingies cut <laughs> off there. So Ow. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well with that, let's, uh, let's shuffle up and get started. Let's play some magic. Yeah. All right. See, this is where I, I take the cards out of frame, so you might wonder if I'm stacking the deck. Uh, you know what? I'll know pretty soon if you're stacking the deck. But I am now doing mine in front of the camera, just because I am... Uh, just because you're honorable? Just because like I'm that? honorable. I'm, a, I'm an honorable man here, if, sir. If I wanted to be, you know, really embrace, you know, the dark forces, I could... <laughs> you've just got really you just cheap. got like double lands and all these but things see here. i was gonna say here's the thing is that i don't know enough i think to be able to <laughs> effectively stack a deck like i would probably make things much worse for myself oh, amazing amazing all right so uh shall i start by uh just sort of starting with the rules yeah, All explain right. some stuff to us. Yeah, so what we're going to do is each of us are going to start off with 20 life, and I'm trying to get your life down to zero. You're trying to get my life down to zero. Uh, we begin by shuffling and drawing seven cards. So those seven cards make up our hand, and what we're looking to do is we're looking to have a combination of lands and spells. So I've got the green-white deck. So I'll be playing with forests and plains, and that's gonna be the, the way I sort of am able to summon my creatures, uh, my instants, my sorceries, all of my spells that I wanna play. Uh, essentially, I'm going to uh, put one out onto the battlefield every turn if it's in my hand. If I don't, that means I don't have enough mana to cast the spell. So uh, you better hope that you have enough mana in your seven card hand. Okay, so here, here's the question. So for newbies out there, what what are we looking for in these first seven cards, uh, You know, whether we choose to mulligan or not? Okay, so a mulligan is when you basically say, you know what, 
uh, these cards, they're not going to help me win, and so I am going to reshuffle my hand and uh, draw seven more. Uh, depending on, you know, how you want to play, or whether it's house rules or a tournament, uh, you can draw uh, seven again, or you can uh, draw an additional six, or you can draw seven and put one at the bottom of your library. Um, so it's really sort of uh, a, a nice way to say, you know what, this isn't my best option, I'm going to try again. Okay. All right. So, um, we usually roll for first, but oh, how about rock, paper, scissors, since we both can't oh, okay. see? Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Ready? All right. Rock, paper, scissor, shoot. Oh, Ooh, okay. Ready? Rock, paper, scissor, shoot. Oh, Ooh, this is okay. interesting. <laughs> rock, paper, scissor, shoot. Ah. All right. Okay, so I will elect to go first. Uh, so I will not draw a card. I okay. will simply play my card first. And I am going to play the Grey Pelt Refuge, which is a really cool land that allows you to tap it, which is the act of turning it sideways and using the mana, tap it for a green or a white. So in this case, because mm. I'm playing forests and plains, I have the ability to tap it for either one. Either one. However, this is a good card to play first, hand, uh, first round because it comes into the battlefield already tapped. So I cannot summon any creatures this turn, and I pass the turn to you. All right. Well, with that, I am going to... Oh, first, I'm going to draw. I yes, always you forget are. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you draw at the beginning of every turn, correct? You do. And I'm going to play Evolving Wilds which is a land that allows me to uh, I can tap and it says sacrifice evolving wilds search your library for a basic land card put it into the battlefield tap then shuffle mm. so is sacrifice so let's sacrifice yes. okay. is that, so is that, yeah. what you're going to do right now is you are going to tap that mana, just like I did with mine, you are then going to put that card into what's known as your graveyard. That is a place yes. where uh, you, where, where creatures and spells uh, that are no longer uh, able to be uh, played go. There are a few instances in Magic where you can play cards from your graveyard. I'm going to be honest, I don't know if you have any of that in your deck, uh, but if you do, it might spell trouble for me. So go yeah. ahead and look through your library and find the card, the land card that you want. Okay, easy enough. All right. And it can be any land card, yes? It can be any basic land card. Yeah, it's got to say land. basic land. All right. Easy enough. And then I need to shuffle again. All right, so I chose a mountain one which All gives right. us this red fire ability yes yes so this is your uh mountain mana so you're gonna tap that to play any red spells um because you are playing the red black deck you will only be able to play red cards uh that require uh red mana mm-hmm all right, okay. so is that your turn? Would you like to do anything else? Um, I don't think I can do anything else you, at this point. So, I don't yeah. think you can either, but you know, <laughs> sometimes I think you're hustling me, and I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. All right, so it is now my turn. I am going to untap my magic, and something I actually neglected to mention last turn, Grey Pelt Refuge, when it enters the battlefield, I gain one life. So my life total is now 21 instead of 20. So I get a little bit of an advantage, and that's, it's a great card to play turn yeah. one. That's pretty right. nifty. It is pretty nifty. All right, so I am going to draw a card. So that is my beginning phase. I now have the ability to play any card as long as I have the mana for it. So what I'm going to do is I am now going to play a basic land, and this is a forest, and I am going to tap both my forest and my Grey Pelt Refuge for Frodo, Determined Hero. I love this card so much. So, he is a legendary creature, Halfling Warrior, and you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner, he has 
uh, a two slash two on him. So this is his power and his toughness. So his power is two and his toughness is two. So if I were to um, attack you this turn, you would take two damage and you would be down to 18 life. However, what Frodo has right now is something called Summoning Sickness. See, I can't just bring in a card and attack you that same turn unless the card has a special ability, which, well, I think we might get to later, uh, but the ability is called Haste. Frodo does not have Haste, so I now have to just wait another turn to attack you. And so I will pass my turn to you. All right, so with that, it is my turn, so I will untap which means uh, those things are in play once again. Um, mm -hmm. With that, I will bring out another land card. And, and then this one has a nice skull here. So this is undead or something? Uh, yeah, so this is, <laughs> this is the swamp. Uh, so <laughs> the, the, uh, the five colors of mana within yes, Magic the Gathering. explain those. So, the five colors of mana in Magic the Gathering are red, green, blue, white, and black. Each of them correspond with a type of basic land card. And what we do is we bring the basic land cards out on the battlefield and use them as a kind of mana to summon our creature spells. But you can't just use any mana for any particular spells. So, for example, Matt, who is playing the red and black deck, can only summon cards that have red and black. He also needs enough to be able to play. So when I summon this Frodo, I needed one white because in the top right hand corner, there is one white, but there is also the number one in front of a gray circle. That means I can use any mana I want as long as it is untapped. So Matt, you have the ability to play anything that has two mana cost, but it has to have one red or one black in it. All right, so I am going to tap both of my lands, and I am going to summon Mahaur, the Ooh. Urukai captain, and he has Menace. So, Don, tell us what Menace uh, is. So Menace is a great ability, and it spells trouble for me. Menace is an ability that means I cannot block him with only one creature. So for example, if next turn you were to attack me, I couldn't block him unless I had two creatures blocking him. So if next turn he tries to attack me and I don't have anyone else besides Frodo, that damage is gonna come right to my life total. Well played. All right, uh, anything now, else? Uh, now we uh, should mention, so magic cards at the bottom sometimes have, uh, I. Is it flavor text? Is that what is that the it proper is flavor term? text? Okay, yes. yes. And uh, the cool thing with the Lord of the Rings version is that these are often quotes directly from, or they are quotes directly from the books, pulled right from um, the text themselves. Yeah, and and the, uh, and there's some some cards like the other day I saw the card for Lost Isle Calling, and I was like, I think this is an illustration of Legolas, and I was able to double check because the the text was a quote from Legolas. Um, so this one, we've got Mahur, which is a named orc in the Lord of the Rings. He's ve in, in there very briefly, part of the uh, company that uh, takes Merry and Pippin. And his flavor text says, We are the servants of Saruman the Wise, the White Hand, the hand that gives us man's flesh to eat. I'm so gonna there need we go. You, I'm going to need you to speak in an orc uh, uh, voice the entire time, okay? The whole rest of the game. The whole rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right. Okay. And and he, Ma Mahur here is, uh, he's dizzy from coming into the <laughs> battlefield, right? I forgot that's what you call it. Yes, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> by dizzy, uh, Matt's little uh, personal phrase he uses is the, uh, the summoning sickness, which means uh, Mahur can't attack this turn. You can. Oh, you have to wait until next turn. That's right. All right. All right. Well, with that, I will pass 
to you. All right, so I will go ahead and untap my lands here. Got my Frodo. Uh, I apologize for the uh, slight shift in my uh, playmat. I had to have my cards disappear into a black hole, um, but also <laughs> my camera decided to not play nice. So we have untapped. We are now going to draw a card, and it is... Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, You're I'll bluffing. save... You're Am bluffing. I? You can't see my I face right now. You can't see my <laughs> face right now. All right. So I am going to go ahead and play a Plains card. Now, this is different from Grey Pelt Refuge because Grey Pelt Refuge can be used as either a Forest or a Plains this one can just be used as a planes. And uh, I love that you can just sort of see Gandalf hanging out with some sheep in the uh, in the background there. Pretty great. Well, I like, so what I like about the planes depicted there is that it actually shows the field of Pelennor as farmland instead of just an empty plain. Very because, true. Because there were, there were definitely uh, farms. It was, it was not just an empty battlefield in waiting, so to no. speak. No, no, it was not. All right, so. What I'm now going to do is I am going to tap my lands Ooh. and bring out my second creature card, Rosie Cotton of South Lane. Uh. So she costs one planes and two mana of any other kind. So I was able to tap all three. She also has what I refer to as an ETB or an enter the battlefield effect. So when Rosie Cotton of South Lane enters the battlefield, Create a food token. Uh, and this is so appropriate because hobbits, obviously, lovers of food. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that out as well. Now, a now food explain, token. Now, yes, explain the food token a to A food us. token is a really cool mechanic within Magic the Gathering. So tokens are sort of like secondary spells, if you will. Think of it like uh, things that can be sort of used and disposed of. Um, and most times, they don't cost mana to summon. They usually are triggered by an ability like Rosie's. So, the way food tokens work is if I tap two of my mana during my turn and I sacrifice the food token, I gain three life. So instead of being at 21, I'll then be at 24. This is really great to use, especially if you want to try and um, save yourself from taking damage because you can um, you can you can be sort of in dire straits and need some some life back very quickly uh, if the game goes south. So I am going to hold on to that food still token there, uh, until the time <laughs> is right. So as previously mentioned, Rosie Cotton cannot attack, but Frodo because he no longer has summoning sickness can attack. But I don't necessarily know if I want to. So can you explain the power and toughness of your Mahor? orc creature yeah so he is also a 2-2 two -two. so mm. he's got two uh two toughness right toughness and what was the other phrase you used uh power and toughness power so, and toughness yes okay. so power is the one on the left toughness is the one on the right so it is essentially offense and defense for those of us uh who might it be is. a little more sports minded yes. here yeah <laughs> exactly 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 okay um, the thing I want to uh, point out, though, is that Frodo has a pretty special ability uh, that I wasn't able to play last turn or this turn, but I am actually not going to attack, because here's what would happen if I did attack. If I were to attack, I would tap Frodo, and we would enter the combat phase. So I would declare my attackers. So let's say I were to declare my attackers with Frodo. Matt, you would declare your blockers. The mm -hmm. thing is, is that my two power would deal damage to your two toughness, and both creatures would be destroyed. Now, yes. there is a chance that when I declare my attackers, you just say, that's fine, I don't want to block. No blockers. And so you would then take that damage, and you would be down to 18 life. But that's a risk I'm not willing to take yet. Plus, I really like Frodo because he's got this great ability that says, as long as it is your turn, prevent all damage that would be dealt to Frodo. So I'm going to save uh -huh. him as a little extra security for later. Okay. So okay. I am going to forego my combat phase and pass the turn to you. 
All right, and with that, I will untap and draw a card. And I'll pretend like this is the most amazing card ever. Oh my gosh. What is it? It's so amazing. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so I am going to bring out another swamp. So okay. I've got two, two swamps here. Mm -hmm. And with that, now I will bring out the fires of Mount Doom that Ooh. I wanted to do earlier. Well, tap your mana first. Okay, yes. Tap the mana. Thank you for... Got to keep them honest. Getting, getting me the parliamentary procedure here. Uh, 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 um, so, <laughs> so we've got the Fires of Mount Doom, which is a legendary en enchantment. And this is a rare card, by the way. Mm. Um, when Fires of Mount Doom enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to target creature and opponent controls. <gasps> Destroy all equipment attached to that creature. No! So... Frodo's dead now. Frodo's gone. Okay. Well, so much for my extra security. I should have attacked. So Frodo is now going to go into my graveyard, meaning he is not going to be in play for me any longer. Well played. Well played. Thank you. Now, <laughs> uh, that is an enchantment, correct? Yes, it is so, an enchantment. So ex explain to us where so, should I situate that first? So, I mean, it's, it's totally up to you where you want to put your enchantments. I typically do uh, three rows where the land is on the bottom, the creatures are on the top, and uh, enchantments and artifacts and stuff like that are on the third. However, I have a bit of a smaller space right now, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and make this a, a weird-looking um, triangle here. Yeah. You are nice. welcome to put it wherever you want. Um, <laughs> but enchantments are a really interesting uh, Magic the Gathering card type because... It's not a creature. You'll notice it doesn't have a power and toughness. It's just basically a spell that is ongoing. And the only way that I can get rid of it is if I can remove that enchantment. Hmm. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret, folks. I don't think I have anything that can remove a target enchantment in my hand. So I'm going to have to get very lucky. Can you read me the rest of that card's abilities, yes. please? Yes. Yeah, so uh, with um, a red mana and two others it says exile the top card of your library you may play that card this turn when you play a card this way fires of mount doom deals two damage to each player mm. okay so we've got a new mechanic to discuss so exile is a it's another uh place where the cards can go just like i put frodo in the graveyard mm -hmm. there are cards that send cards into exile so just as an example matt on your next turn when we get to it you yeah. could you can send a card into exile and then rather than having it be in your hand you could play that card ah oh. but so so this says the top card of my library which this is the, my library correct? that is your library correct okay. yes so I would exile it, perhaps maybe here or something, so it's on camera. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then now I that, have the option. Of it, there's my there's my library. There's my graveyard. <laughs> okay, and so um, so you would exile it, and then you can play it. Like, do you do you need to tap mana to bring that in, or you, you just would play? need to tap? You would need to tap mana to bring it in. Okay, but. It would deal two damage to you, and it would deal two damage to me because it says each player. Yeah, so we are both players. That's a that's a very orcish way to go about things. Mm -hmm. you know, hurt yourself, just, hurt yeah. others, really just, mutually yeah. assured destruction. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sounds, I'm embracing it today. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, Matt, I. Uh, with that, yeah, it, it, I will pass the turn to you because that no, is all no, that I now, now, Matt. Uh, oh, I unless I want to attack. Unless you want to attack. So that playing that card was your main phase. We yep. will now go into the combat phase. Now, if you're feeling very generous, you don't have to attack me. However, just like we said last time, last turn, your creature card has menace, meaning it yeah. can't be blocked by just one creature. Right. And if you'll notice my board, folks. I don't have two creatures. Yes. So, so Matt, I will. So I will tap the heck out of that guy so that 
he can attack Don and deal some damage. And I have no choice but to take that damage. So I am now down to 19 life. Matt, you are winning. For now. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So All right. we yeah, have and- declared the attackers. I cannot declare any blockers. The combat damage has been dealt. We now go to your second main phase. Now, we haven't had to do this yet because we haven't had the mana to do it, but everybody gets a main phase, a combat phase, and a second main phase. I'm fortunate enough, though, that Matt doesn't have any mana to do anything, and unless he has any tricks up his sleeve, he will pass the turn to me. I do not have any tricks, so I will, uh, yeah, pass Pass. to you. All right, fantastic. First thing I will do is untap all of my mana, pray that this is a good card, Okay, Uh, and I will play a forest. So I now have four total mana. And that means I am going to play... Ooh. Yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to tap one white, and I'm going to tap two greens to play Knight of the Keep. He is a human Mm. knight with three power and two toughness, and I love the flavor text on this one. Let me bring it up here. Now the cries of clear, strong voices came ringing over the field. They rode in, a long line of mail-clad men, swift, shining, fell and fair to look upon. Suddenly they swept up with a noise like thunder, and the foremost horsemen swerved. Mmm. Love to see it. Okay. Now, I cannot attack with Knights of the Keep because he has summoning sickness. Dizzy, That's right. as you Dizzy. would say. Yep. Uh, and Rosie is, uh, is, has the ability to attack this turn because she no longer has summoning sickness. Mm. Now, here's a little trick, folks, that I maybe didn't mention to Matt for my own benefit. Because Matt attacked me last turn, yes. he doesn't have anything to block me with. So I am going to end my main phase, and I am going to enter my combat phase. And I am going to declare my attackers Rosie Cotton. And Matt, Mm. you have no blockers. I have no blockers. you are going to take one point of damage. You are now down to 19 life. We are tied again. Tied. (laughs) (laughs) Now, as far as strategy goes, uh, like... I mean, obviously, there's different strategies, but I I feel like, uh, you know, in general, the games that I've played anyway, people seem to not get too worked up about losing damage early in the game because you start with right. 20. Yes, so losing life is not as big a deal when you're first starting out in the game. It's only when you get to maybe five or six life that you really want to start worrying because some big creatures might be out in play and be able to hit you for that much damage. My Rosie only did one damage, so it's not a huge deal right now, but maybe later it will be. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm talking a lot of smack for someone that's you playing are. against a newbie, so... Playing against a newbie, who I I do want to disclose the fact that that Don and I have played Magic together. He was <laughs> present, and I beat him three out of three games. So to be fair, to be fair, point of order, you did have help. I did, I did. I had, yeah. I I was going to <laughs> declare that as well because I I had. Uh, basically a phone a friend throughout the entire thing so i could say <laughs> i'm thinking of doing this is this dumb <laughs> yes or no okay sorry all right so we'll get uh, sidetracked there we yes go. sorry combat is over i now enter my second main phase i do not have anything i can do so i am going to go ahead and pass the turn to you okay all right well with that i will draw a oh no i will untap there we go there we go see See, you can. He's tell. learning. I'm He's still learning, a newbie. folks. Still a newbie. Untap, right. then draw. Okay. We are now in your main phase. You may play a land, only one per turn, and you may cast a creature or other spells. Okay, so I'm going to play a mountain. Okay, that's your land for the turn. That is my land for the turn, and I'm going to. Let's 
Sorry, just looking at my options here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Plotting my demise is more like That's likely. right. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. There's an awful lot of silence on the other end well, of this yeah, call, no, Matthew. I, so, so I I have this habit of not really reading through the cards until I'm actually able to play them. <laughs> so it makes the early going a little faster, but then as as uh, as we go on, it it slows things down a little bit. To okay, I have to say so. <laughs> um. All right. So I am going to. I'm gonna bring out a couple cards actually. Oh! So I'm gonna tap. I'm gonna tap two and bring out a goblin assailant. Oh, I forgot Ooh. to untap my. Oh! Uh, sorry. It's ruined. The game is sorry. over. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna bring out a goblin assailant. He is a two-two, and this actually just has flavor text. Um. So he's just just a simple little goblin guy. He's just a little guy. Little little guy. Yeah. Um. And then I'm also gonna tap my two swamps and bring out an artifact Ooh! now this is the mind stone and if you tap the mind stone you get to correct me if i'm wrong here don but you get to add a mana you do yes uh you'll notice though that the mana is not a specific color so you can only play it to fulfill the requirements of a spell that have that number in the circle in the top right hand corner yes Okay, and then I also, the second ability here is with one, if I tap another mana and tap this, I can sacrifice the mind so stone and draw a card. Ooh, okay, very useful if you don't have a lot of cards in your hand or you're in mm -hmm. desperate need of something that might be able to save you. That's a great card. All right. Okay. Okay, with that, um, now refresh my memory here. What is uh, your defendable yes. character so there. my defendable knight of the keep is a three two so mm. three power two toughness now as has previously been mentioned your little uh mahur creature mm -hmm. has menace and i only have one blocker right so logic would uh logic would lead you to say maybe i should attack with mahur again yeah. Okay. Well, that was what I was leaning toward. So I will, in fact, do that. So I will tap Mahur and attack Don. All right. And that is two damage to me. I am now down to 17. Matt is winning again. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. So <laughs> that is your combat phase over. Uh, do you have anything to do during your second main phase? I do not. Okay. So I will pass to you. All right. And remind me again what that enchantment does. The enchantment um, is, well, it's only when it enters the battlefield that it does the damage. Right. Um, the second so ability is. So the second ability, I have to, to tap two Can lands. Can you read it? Can you read it to me? Yeah. Just so. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if I tap two lands and a mountain, um, that is a red mana. Mm -hmm. I, I can exile the top card of my library. Um, you may play that card this turn. When you play a card this way, Fires of Mount Doom deals two damage to each player. Got it, got it. Okay, so you don't have the mana to do that just yet, so I'm safe Correct. for now. All right. So, and I'm safe, because it would deal damage to me, too. It, it would, but, you know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes you... Uh... You want that in certain Break a few there. eggs, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Make exactly. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, are you passing the turn to me, my friend? Yes, I All am. Right. I will. Go ahead and, oh, excuse me. I will untap first. Yeah. Then I will draw a card. Yep. Always untap first, folks. All right. So I, ooh. Hmm. Do I have enough for that? One, two, three, four, five. I don't. All right. You'll uh, have to wait until the next time to see my trick. I'm Sounds going big. to play. Mm, maybe. I am going to play another forest. So I now have five total lands. I am then going to put out. Oh, hang on. I'll try that again. 
I am then going to tap one forest and a plains to play a mushroom watchdog. Hey. Love these guys. Farmer uh, so maggots dogs. Farmer maggots dogs. I believe it's grip and fang. Grip, oh, fang, they're and on the wolf. Flip. Yes, yeah, that's true. There's three of them. So I'm Ugh. hoping there's a farmer maggot card somewhere that has the third dog with him. You know, it might be in this deck. I, there's a chance Ooh. I maybe missed it, or if it's in this set, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, Mushroom Watchdog is a 2-2, two -two, uh, and it has an ability where if I sacrifice a food token, I can put a what's called a plus one, plus one counter on Mushroom Watchdog, mm. and it gains the ability vigilance now plus one plus one counter is basically boosting the power and toughness of my creatures so if i were to sacrifice a food token instead of it being a two two it would be a three three and vigilance is a wonderful ability that allows you to instead of tapping when you attack he stays untapped so i would be able to use it as a blocker now, that's only if I sacrifice a food token, so I can't do that just yet. And in fact, I am actually not going to declare any attackers this turn, because I learned my lesson. I'm going to block that orc. Okay. All right. So are you passing? Is that what you're I saying? Am, yes, I am uh, foregoing my combat phase okay. and my second main phase and passing the turn. All right. Well, I will untap. And then uh, for the food, remind us, what what does it take to sacrifice a food? So if you would like to sacrifice a food token, you will need to pay two mana and then tap the food token and sacrifice it. Okay. All right. Is that something you're going to be doing? No, no, no. I, I was oh, saying oh, right. because I you were talking about That's right. It. I yeah. have the food tokens. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, you can cut that okay. out. No, you're fine. All right. Um, I'm going to tap three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an awful lot of contemplation there. Yeah. I'm going to tap three, and I am going to summon Dunland Krebine. Ah, the Krebine from Dunland. Um and they have the ability of flying, which I know, you know, it's a bird, so duh. But this is a specific <laughs> card ability. So, Don, tell us tell us what flying means. Right, so flying means trouble for me. But it also means, mechanically speaking, uh, that next turn when uh, the Dunland Krabine attack, I can't block it unless I have another creature with flying or a creature with an ability called reach, meaning they're able to reach up and attack the flying creature. Um, I'm going to let you know right now, hobbits can't fly. So mm. I might be in a little bit of trouble. Well now, played. And, now, the, uh, the nice mm. thing for you here, if there's a silver lining, is that the Dunland Krebine is only a 1-1, one, one, but what... what I can do is kind of, you know, until Don has a way to block it, I can just kind of pepper him one one uh, damage each round until he has a way to stop this. Mm. Now, the Dunlin Krebine also, when it enters the battlefield, amass orcs too. Oh, okay. So, should we get into the amass mechanic? I think we should, yes. All right. So, uh, if you would like to be so kind as to get out your orc... Here we army. go. Orc army. There it is. There it is. Now, orc army, this is a really cool mechanic, and I love that they did this. Amass is an ability that basically lets you build up an orc army into a really powerful creature. So you'll notice right now that orc army is zero, zero. But when you amass, and then there is a number after it, you get to put, like we mentioned, plus one, plus one counters on it to make the creature more powerful. So instead of being a 0-0, zero, zero, your orc army is now a 2-2. Two, two. Yes. And I happen to have a couple of these little plus one counters. So oh, I can... Oh, look at you! Plus one, plus one. So... So it is so now orc a army two, two. is now a 2-2. Two, two. Yes. Oh. Uh-oh. I might be in a little trouble here, folks. Okay. You keep saying that, but I don't know. I think you, you just are trying to hedge your bets here. Like, just... 
Yeah. Psychological warfare, man. It's I think it is. Yeah, you're trying warfare. to set my mind at ease. <laughs> no, me? <laughs> All right. Um, and with that, I will pass the turn. to. Dom. So you are not oh, wait, going to wait, enter the combat? No, no. Wanna... I should enter the combat. You can because, serve, you can if you want well, to, but hey, listen. Okay, man. so Dunlin Krebine, now is Orc Army also, do they yes, have summoning sickness? they also okay. have summoning sickness as so, well. So, for, so these are the only two that I could attack with. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the thing that I have to keep in mind now is that Don actually has enough people to block my Mahur, and he could destroy him. I could. So I want to actually. I know so. you want to. So, <laughs> so I think I'm gonna stay and I'm gonna play defense for a round or so. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. I see how it is. So you uh, pass the I combat pass. phase. Pass yeah. the second main phase. It is now my turn. I will draw a card. Ooh. Okay. Uh. Hmm, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and untap everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap one plains and two forests to play yet another Knight of the Keep. So I've now oh. got two of them. So a fun little fact about um, your standard magic game is you can have up to four of the same creature card in your hand. And I'm actually glad this happened because I wanted to try and explain that. So if you find that you've got a card whose ability you really like... You can have up to four in your deck. Wow. So, for example, if you uh, really liked flying because I didn't have any creature cards with flying, you could theoretically just pepper me for four damage if you've got all four of those cards out. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. So yeah, you yeah, could yeah. have, you know, uh, like four Saurons, hypothetically speaking. So technically, yes. I don't necessarily recommend that, though, because it might be a bit much. A bit much, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So um, we, we seem to be uh, in a little bit of a stalemate. Um, mm. And I'm actually going to go ahead and also play defense. So I am going to forego my combat phase and my second main phase, and I pass the turn to you again. All right. Well, I will untap draw a card okay and i've got any e another evolving wilds card Ooh, okay excellent so you can go ahead and tap and sacrifice that yep so that's what i will search, do search your library search my library for a basic land so i will bring out and that has to be tapped. It does. And I need to shuffle. Okay, so what I am going to do now is I am going to tap uh, two and a swamp. Okay. And I'm going to summon um, Mordor Trebuchet. Oh, no. <laughs> which is a it says defender ah now, okay so defenders cannot attack they can only block okay so this is a blocking card it says whenever you attack with one or more goblins and or orcs create a 2-1 colorless construct artifact creature token with flying named ballistic boulder that's tapped and attacking. Sacrifice that token at end of combat. Would you like me to maybe explain that? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this so. is so this is the ballistic boulder. <laughs> there it token. is. There it is. So yes. So the way this card works, I love this card. Um, the trebuchet cannot attack. However, it can send tokens to attack very easily. So if you chose to attack with both of your orcs or goblins, you would then get another token coming onto the battlefield, attacking me. It has flying, so again, mm -hmm. I can't block it because I don't have creatures with reach or flying, uh, and it would deal two damage to me. It's a very great way to get some chip damage 
early on in the game. Uh, and combining that every turn with your Crabine from Dunlin, or your uh, Dunland Crabine, mm -hmm. I, I might actually be in a little bit of trouble. Full disclosure, I have been lying this whole time. I've been fine. Now I might be in trouble. <laughs> You'll also sacrifice it at the end of your turn. So right. it won't stay on the battlefield. The Ballistic Boulder, yes. Yes, okay. the Ballistic Boulder will sacrifice will be sacrificed at the end of the turn. Gotcha. So, the question then remains, are you going to be attacking me with both orcs? Now, does the Mordor trebuchet, does it also have summoning sickness? Okay, so the way this is going to work is, if you attack with both of your orcs, that trebuchet's ability is going to just happen automatically. The question is, will he do it? Hmm. Now, remind me of the defenses you have currently. Right. So I have two three twos for the Knights of the Keep, mm -hmm. a one one in Rosy Cotton, and a one one in Mushroom Watchdog. And my two attackers, my two orcs, are both two twos. Mm hmm. Which seems like it would be pretty easy for you to destroy. That is correct. Uh, However, keep in mind, your two, two twos, would deal two damage to my two toughness creatures. So they would both be destroyed. It's a mutually assured mm, destruction kind of deal. Yeah. You also have a creature with menace, meaning I'll have to block one but, with two. Right. Yes. Well, I know that I will be attacking with the Dunlin Crebine. Because All you have right. no way to block it, so that's All a right. given. So that's one. Okay, so we had a bit of a pause there because uh, I realized in my infinite wisdom here that I <laughs> forgot about Mahur's ability here, guys. So Mahur says, if one or more plus one counters would be put on an army goblin or orc you control, that many plus one, one counters are put on it instead. So back when I created this orc army instead of putting one one counters on it they should be on mahur so i should not have an orc army at all actually and instead mahur should have plus one plus one twice so he is now a four four so apologies for the break there that's what you get when when us newbies play <laughs> so don't don't be freaked out you know don't get frustrated if if you know, you're learning to play this game and you have situations like that. It's all part of learning to play as I am demonstrating all too effectively for you right now. Yeah, sometimes the learning curve is half the fun. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay. okay, so so now I really am in trouble because you've declared your flying attacker. Yes. Will you be declaring any other attackers? Now, I believe... Okay, so you have... I have a 3-2, a 3-2, a 1-1, one, one, and a 2-2. Two, two. So yes, so, and I've got, I feel pretty good because I've got the Mordor trebuchet for defense mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. if Don decides to attack. Um, so I will go ahead and attack with Mahur as well. Okay. Um, Are you also going to be attacking with the other goblin so that you can activate the trebuchet? Oh, it's one or more goblins. One or more, yeah. Sorry, never mind. Cut that out. Yes, uh, you can cut that portion out. That's yeah. Um, I think I might leave that goblin behind for defense. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll leave it at that. So I'll attack with those two. Um, and yeah. All right. We'll go with so that. so that's the com. So now we're we're in combat mode here. All right. So we have entered the combat phase. You have declared your attackers. It is time for me to declare my blockers. And unfortunately, I can't block the crabine from Dunland. So I am now down to fifteen health. You have nineteen. So, so and and we should note too because I'm a attacking with oh that's right the orc that the trebuchet is activated. So there's a ballistic boulder flying at dawn right now too. I am now down to 13 health because of that extra flying boulder. It's two, now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the question becomes, do I block with my powerful creatures or do I let it all pass and just mm. take the damage? Yeah. Now remind me again, what is your creature's power, your uh, orc Mahor? 
He is a 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so, Matt, you have declared your attackers. It is now time for me to declare my blockers. Yes. I cannot block your crabine, and I cannot block your boulder, so I am now down from 17 life to 14. The question becomes, do I want to take that four damage from your orc? Yes. Yes, I do. Are you well, no, me? I'm, I'm just saying, I'm agreeing <laughs> with you. That is that is your dilemma. Yeah. It is my dilemma. Um, <sighs> yes, I think I am going to block your orc with my okay. rosy cotton. Now, when I declare my blockers, what I am going to do is I am going to sort of push it forward a little bit and... I am going to block all of the damage that that orc would do, but because Rosie is a 1-1, one, one, it's only going to deal one damage to your toughness, meaning you're still going to live. Yes. So the question is, do I want to also block with one of my Knights of the Keep mm. to destroy Mahor? but it would also destroy both of my creatures. And I think mm. the answer is... Now, Mahor is a 4-4. Four, four. He is. So the way the damage yeah. would work here is Mahor would deal uh, two damage to my Knight of the Keep and yep. one damage to Rosie. Yeah. And both of them would be destroyed because it's sort of spread out. It's able to spread out evenly. However, because I have three attack on my Knight... And one attack on, or excuse me, because I have three power on my knight and three pow and one power on my Rosie, I'm gonna deal enough damage to destroy Mahur and send him to the okay. graveyard. All right. And that is and that, exactly what I am yes. going to do. I declare my two blockers, Knights of the Keep and Rosie Cotton. So, yes. bye bye to my Knight of the Keep and bye bye Rosie, and you. We'll say bye bye to Mahor. To Mahor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we've done some so damage. You've to done each other. some damage. Now, that is the combat phase. The combat okay. damage has been dealt. Yep. You now enter your second main phase. Is there anything else you would like there to is, do? There is nothing else I would like to do. Okay. Well, then the turn passes to me. I will go ahead and first untap everything. Draw a card, play a planes, and I was so hoping this would happen because I am now going to tap one green and five. So everything oh. I have for Generous Ent. Oh. And Generous Ent has a very specific key word that you, uh, you might be a little bit worried about here. He has an ability called Reach meaning that I am able to block a creature with flying. He ah. has five power and seven toughness, and when he enters the battlefield, I create another food token. Mm. So I am going to go ahead and use my little dice. This is also from a uh, magic set, just to keep that there as a reminder that, by the way, you've got two food tokens. Okay. All right, now, you've only got your little goblin assailant. And a Mordor trebuchet. Oh, and the Mordor trebuchet as a defender. Mmm. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Then I, I think I, put him I am going to... Okay. I think I am going to... Hmm. You'll be able to block my knight because it has four, right? It's an, an O4? Uh, Mordor Trebuchet is a 1-4. Oh, excuse me, a 1-4. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't really make sense for me to attack right now because you'd just be able to block it with your goblin and your trebuchet. Mm -hmm. So I am going to forego my combat phase. I am going to forego my second main phase and pass the turn again to you. All right. With that, I will untap draw a card and I will add a swamp I don't know why I have these in two different piles here that's weird land land groupings is entirely a personal preference and it tells you a lot about the person 
All right. Um, okay. With that, let's see here. Um, okay. So I am going to tap all my lands. Okay. And I am going to summon an Oliphant. Oh, no! Which has Trample. Don, oh, tell us no. about Trample. So, Trample is an amazing ability that basically means that when an attacker, that Oliphant, deals damage, if there is excess damage from the amount that I blocked, that damage goes directly to me. So, for example, if you were to only attack with your Oilophant, I would block with any number of my creatures. But if I don't have enough defense, enough toughness to stop that creature, you're going to deal damage directly to me. The attacker with Trample deals excess damage to the defending player or Planeswalker or Battle even if it's blocked. So even if I were to block you, if there's excess damage, I'm going to take that directly. Yeah. All right. And whenever Oliphant attacks, another target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero, and gains trample until the end of turn. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Now, okay. now my other cards, like this would actually have paired really well with Mahur, who is mm -hmm. up to a 4-4. Four, four. He would have become a 6-4 at that point. But Mahur is dead. May he rest in peace. <laughs> um, so if I were, you know, I can't this turn because he, he, is, uh, he has summoning sickness. But if I were to attack with the Oliphant and say Goblin Assailant, Goblin Assailant then becomes a 4-2 instead of a 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. Um, so there we go. Mm. Um, oh, and dear. with that, um, I think I am going to hit me in the air. Well, but you have, you have an ent now. Oh, that's true. I do um, have an ent. Remind me, what is your, what is your ent's, uh, what, yes. is, what is his, uh, Yes. So defense? let me, let me do that. So my ent's power is five and his toughness is seven. So he would swat your little... Crabine right out of the sky. Yes, he would. Okay. All right. Well, uh, with that, I think I will stand pat for now. Okay. And, and let you do your thing. All right. As you pass the turn to me, I am going to untap everything. I am going to draw a card. And... Ah! <laughs> oh, no. That's an oh-no for you. All right, I am going to uh, tap... I figured. One Plains. I am going to tap one Forest, and I am going to summon East Mark Cavalier. It is a human knight with two power and two toughness, and when it deals damage to a goblin or an orc, I destroy that creature. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you better think twice about coming for me with your little goblin friends. My goblin assailant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Matthew, I've done the math. Mm -hmm. And I think that you might be able to uh, get me down to zero next turn unless I do something. So I am going to do something. Okay. I am actually going to declare my attackers with my generous Ent okay. as well as my Knights of the Keep. Okay. It is now your turn to declare your blockers. Alright. Remind me, what, what score am I currently at? You have 19 life. I have not hit you very much at all. Okay. And you are right now, if I were to not block... That would give me how much damage? Uh, you would take uh, eight damage total. You would wow. be down to 11. Okay. Yeah. And you are currently at how much? Sorry. I am currently at 14. 14. Okay. Um, so I can easily block the Knight, uh, of the, Keep. the Knight of the Keep with the Trebuchet, which is only good for defense anyway. Correct. Correct. So, so I should do that. Um, and then... 
there's part of me that, you know, now that you have that int, this Dunlin Krebine isn't so vital to me. He's not, no. So I could block with block the int with the Krebine and sacrifice him and save myself a lot of damage. You could, yes. You also, you wouldn't tap. That would just right. be, yes. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to do that? So yeah, I think that's what I will do. Okay. So yes, so I will block the knight with the Mordor trebuchet um, because he can do that and survive. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to sacrifice this Dunlin Krebine uh, to block that end. Okay. So the Krebine is gone. The trebuchet yep. remains. Yep. You take no damage. No damage. Okay. All right. That is the end of the combat phase. We now go to the second main phase. I do not have anything else to do. I pass the turn. Okay, I will untap, draw a card. I'll pull out a mountain land that I just drew. Now, let us see here. All right, so I am going to um, use, I'm gonna tap three and a mountain. Okay. And I am going to uh, cast a sorcery. Oh, okay. This will be our first sorcery this of the game. This is our first sorcery, yes. Um, so this is called Fire of Orthanc. And it reads, destroy target artifact or land. And creatures without flying can't block this turn. Mmm. Oh, no. So, oh no! You have no flying right now. I have no creatures with flying. Um. So, with that in mind, I think. Okay, I think I'm also. I'm gonna sacrifice this mind stone by <sighs> tapping uh -huh. a couple. Um. Oh, sorry. I tap tap one and tap this to sacrifice the mind stone and I get to draw a card. You do. So I'll do that. Okay. Um, and I will tap the remaining two. Oh no. To summon. Now they're going to have summoning sickness, but Easterling Vanguard, mm. which is a, a two one. Um, and when Easterling Vanguard dies, a mass orcs one. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on army you control. It's also an orc. If you don't control an army, create a 0-0 zero, zero black orc army creature token first. So that's what we inadvertently did earlier um, that's not in the game right now. But, uh, yeah. That's so, okay. So that's got summoning sickness. This is for defense. Um, so Dawn cannot block right <sighs> now. Oh, dear. Um, so I am going to attack with both the Oliphant and my goblin assailant mm -hmm. and, and remember that the trebuchet also has that additional effect yes so the trebuchet brings in a ballistic boulder since i attacked with one goblin so that is another two heading toward don right now so that is two plus six is eight plus two is ten so that is ten <sighs> damage that don can do nothing about oh. right now absolutely brutal i am down to four life points oh and i forgot the sorcery the first line of that was destroy target artifact or land so we're also going to destroy one of don's food tokens oh i was going to use those next to come on ah oh, okay i am now down i'll get rid of the dice Bring that food token back in just so I remember to use it next turn. My goodness. Okay, well. So that is that is it for my turn. Uh, yeah. I would so hope you so. you are at what what score now? I am at four life. I've got to okay. do something very serious. Okay. Okay, okay. You pass the turn. I pass uh, the that turn. sorcery goes into the graveyard. Yes. Yep. Alright. Okay, so my turn. I need something drastic. I have untapped, I have drawn a card, and I am going to... I'm going to tap to sacrifice my food token and gain three life. I am now back up to seven life points total. 
Uh, it's still not looking good, but I, I gotta do something. You gotta. You, do, you gotta. I am also going to... Mm, should I do that? Hmm. I think I am. I am going to tap three, and I am going to bring out an artifact equipment. Now, this is our first one of the game, so I'm going to oh, explain yeah. this a little bit. The Galothrin Bow is an artifact, and what artifacts do is they allow you to take equipment, so in this case, a bow from Lothlorien, and attach it to one of your creatures. I have to pay a certain amount of mana to bring it out onto the battlefield. I also have to pay a certain amount of mana to equip it. So the equip cost for a Galothrim bow is two, and I don't have two. So at the very least, I'm gonna try and survive for as long as possible to try and equip this uh, to another creature, because when I do, it will give it a plus one to its power and a plus two to its uh, uh, plus two to its toughness. It will also gain reach. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So I need to play a little bit of defense here because I need to. Well, hang on. Let me try that again. You'll deal two damage to me next turn if you attack with the goblin that I can't block. The flying. So, well, you could block with the Ent. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right. Okay, so I need to start playing a little bit of defense here. I'm going to go ahead and pass my turn. I forego combat. Okay. I forego my second main phase. Pass the turn. All right. I will untap. Draw a card. All right. Don, what is the mana value of your Ent? Six. Your mana value is six. Okay. Why? Why do you ask? I, what's, I'm what's happening? asking. I'm asking because I figured that's something that people would want to know. What is a mana value? Yes. That is something that people would want to know. It's odd that you bring it up now, though, so I'm wondering <laughs> why no you're at... No, no reason. reason? No reason yeah. at all? No just reason? tell us. Just randomly tell us yeah, what a mana just, value is. I'll just randomly tell you my uh, the mana value of my of my Ent. It's six. It's one green and five. Okay. So that is... So it is the combined uh, amount. So the gray with the number plus whatever symbols. Uh, each of the symbols is one, so... Okay. okay. Um, good to know. All right. Uh, I am going to... Let's see here. I think I'm going to use this guy. Oh, you Which is uh, Fires of Mount German. Doom. Yeah. Um, well, oh. yes. Yes, I am. Oh. Yeah, so, so I'm going to tap a mountain and two. So red and two mana. And I'm going to exile the top card of my library which uh -huh. is this card so that is goblin assailant okay now uh i can play that card this turn when i play a card this way fires amount doom deals two damage to each player oh and i only have seven life yes and you do. do you have enough mana though to play your goblin assailant? Yes, I do. Oh so, no! So I have. I will tap a further two mana and bring out goblin assailant. And I will take two damage, and so will and, you. So I so am now. I. Oh, so I'm now down to five. You are now yes. down to seventeen. All right. So fires of Mount Doom. Oh, that stays here, right? It does. It's an enchantment. Okay. It stays oh, on wow. the battlefield. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. I might have. Might have used that earlier if I <laughs> I thought I had to banish it. Never mind. Uh, no, nope, okay. nope, still there. All right. So I am also going to bring forth a sorcery card. Oh, tap, no. Tap my last two. This is Feed the Swarm. And it reads, destroy target creature or enchantment an opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent's mana value. Oh, my. So you've got that that Ent there with a big old defense on him I and do. big old attack. I do. It has five power and seven toughness. So I think I don't want him in the game anymore. So 
I, and you said the mana value is five? The mana value is six. Six, okay. Well, but I've got a pretty decent lead here, so I think I'm gonna take the hit so that I can get your Ent out of here. <sighs> I have no way to counter it, so farewell, generous Ent. You were a good card but you are gone. All right, Generous Ent moves to my graveyard. You take six additional damage. You are now down yes. to 11. Yes. And I am down to five. And you are down to five. Okay. Now, you have no way now of blocking flying. I do not. So, so I am going to, I will definitely be attacking with Goblin Assailant. Okay. Which now, I do just in. want to remind you, before yes. before you declare that Goblin Assailant, my Eastmark Cavalier has, whenever it deals damage to a Goblin or Orc, destroy that creature. So if I were to mm. block that, it would be gone. Yes. Well, I do have a backup now. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm trying to end it on this turn, uh -huh. in case you had noticed. All right. So what what is your total defense right now, Don? Right. So I have a 2-2 two -two Eastmark Cavalier. I have a 3-2 Knights of the Keep and a 2-2 two -two Mushroom Watchdogs. Okay, so I've got in play a 2-2 two -two Goblin Assailant, a 6-4 mm -hmm. with Trample Oliphant, mm. a 2-1 uh, Easterling Vanguard, and then I've got the Trebuchet that'll send a 2-1 your way. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. So with that, I'm I'm just gonna bring bring the entire party here, and we'll send everybody your way, including the ballistic boulder. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I can't block the flying anymore. Right. But I can block some other things. Now remind me of the oliphant's ability. The the oliphant has trample. Okay. Um, now, oh, sorry. This is this is important this as well. This is the big one, yeah. Whenever Oliphant attacks, another target creature you control gets plus two, plus zero, and gains trample until the end of the turn. So, um, another creature that I have would be the Goblin Assailant. So mm -hmm. he would be a four, two now. Mm-hmm. And he has Trample. And he has Trample. Okay. So. This might be the end, folks. <laughs> my losing streak continues. Let me just make sure I... Let me do yeah, my math let's, right. Let's let get me the do math. my math right. We gotta so, do the math. I can't block the two damage from the boulder, so I am now down to three. Yes. If I attempt to block everything from the Oilophant, mm -hmm. that does four. That's four? Uh, you said it's the, a four six? It's a six four. Oh, it's a six four. <laughs> Folks, we just took a little bit of a break. I've done the math, and I can't block three damage. I could theoretically block with Eastmark Cavalier and destroy your goblin, but it would still mm. deal two excess damage. And because of the trample of your Oilophant, I don't have enough to block both the Oilophant's damage and the Easterling's damage. So Matt, you are the winner of this oh, man. fourth round and this uh, learn how to play magic with us. Thank you so much. For kicking my butt again. <laughs> it's my my pleasure, Don. <laughs> well played, well hey. played, my friend. This was great. Well, thank you so much, Don, for hopping on here and uh, doing this learn to play with us today. Um, yeah, it's always a good time playing magic. Always a with pleasure, you. man. This is this has been fun. Uh, I definitely want a rematch. I need my revenge. Well, we are definitely going to do that rematch, and we're actually going to do it immediately following this on Don's channel. So 
uh, we're going to hopefully redirect you over there. The link will be in the chat and in the uh, comments below. Um, but we're going to hop over on Don's channel and play a few more games, uh, maybe a little bit quicker pace, uh, still going to be explaining some things. Reading you know. less of the flavor text and yeah. doing the orc voices and the, yeah, all that fun stuff. We, we should <laughs> always do the orc voices. Yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this Learn to Play. I hope uh, it's been informative and uh, gets you guys uh, at least a little bit further down the road in learning to play the game. Again, you know, don't get frustrated if there's mistakes along the way. Goodness knows I've made mistakes along the way and had to stop and ask questions. So ne never be afraid to ask questions. But um, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll hop on over to Don's channel, play some more magic. And we'll see you next time here on Nerd of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth is available now wherever magic is sold. Check out the link in the description to learn more and order packs of The Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth.